In January 1943, at a conference in the Moroccan city of Casablanca, Churchill and Roosevelt agreed to open a new front on German-dominated Europe. The obvious target was Italy, seriously weakened by its North African failures. The only question was where should the invasion begin? Should the route go via Sardinia or Sicily? The Allied High Command chose the Sicilian route, but to throw the Germans off the scent, they organized a deception plan. Operation Mincemeat was launched. A corpse was dropped off the shores of Spain, carrying false papers. When it was washed ashore in May 1943, and the papers passed to the Germans, they revealed that the Allies would pretend to attack Sicily, but that their real target was Sardinia. Enigma codebreakers soon confirmed the Germans had fallen for it. Six weeks later, the British 8th Army, under Montgomery, landed in the southeast corner of Sicily. The Italian coastal troops presented few problems. Further west, the US 7th Army landed in the Gulf of Gela. The Italian resistance was again overwhelmed. For the Italian people, the invasion of Sicily was the final humiliation. Mussolini was overthrown in a popular uprising. The new government now opened secret talks with the Allies for an armistice. For Hitler, it was another nightmare. He was now forced to pour in yet more scarce resources to protect his southern flank. He told his commanders that even if Italy surrendered, they should fight on. Within five weeks, the Germans had been pushed out of Sicily. The Allies now crossed to the mainland and pushed up through the country. U.S. troops moved up the west side. British troops moved up the east. The Germans fought back savagely all the way. Even so, Naples fell to the Allies on October the 1st, 1943. But then their progress was slowed by autumn rains and skillful German rearguard attacks. It was not until the end of November that Allied forces finally reached the Gustav Line, the first of a series of German defensive positions cutting across Italy. British troops managed to break through at the eastern end of the line, but winter was setting in, and bad weather forced them to halt. It 
Nevertheless, in the West, US forces attempted to outflank the German defenses by taking to the sea. They landed on January the 22nd, 1944, 60 miles to the north at the point of Anzio. But here, amidst fierce fighting, they were pinned down and nearly driven back into the sea. The Americans remained trapped at Anzio for the rest of the winter and into the spring. Meanwhile, in the center of Italy, the key to breaking the Gustav line was the towering Monte Cassino mountain complex. As spring came, there was a series of attempts to capture it. Each assault failed. In desperation, the Allies bombed the historic monastery on the summit. The Germans hung on. Finally, in late spring 1944, as the weather improved, the Allied forces broke through the German lines. Simultaneously, the Americans broke out of Anzio. The Allied forces now moved swiftly north to Rome. The Italian capital was liberated on June the 4th, 1944. For Hitler, it was another blow. He was now hanging on to Italy by his fingernails. The Allies continued to push north. The German defenders finally fell back to the formidable Gothic line, just north of Florence. Here, bad weather again brought the Allied advance to a halt. It wouldn't be until the spring of 1945 that the campaign could resume and Italy was finally won. By then, the Italians had had enough of Mussolini. He was captured by Italian partisan forces and shot. His corpse was hung by its heels in Milan. Mussolini's war had been a catastrophe for himself and his country. It had also left the German southern flank dangerously exposed. The German army was now overcommitted, short of troops, and retreating on all fronts.